Thank you for staying with us. It's time now to take a look at stories making headlines on the front page of Nigeria newspapers. And I begin with the Daily Independent. Niger Kou, as ECOWAS chair, I am under pressure to act fast. Tinubu speaking. Niger Kou, as ECOWAS chair, I am under pressure to act fast. Asks Islamic leaders to expedite action in dialogue with Junta. All right, you find out the details on the front page of the Daily Independent. So the first news newspaper, still talking about uh, the Queen Niger, have been restraining ECOWAS from swooping on Niger coupist, Tinubu speaking. Have been restraining ECOWAS from swooping on Niger coupist, Tinubu, who is uh, the ECOWAS chair, speaking there. All the details on the front page of the first news newspaper to this Nigeria newspaper now. Niger Kou, we don't want war, Islamic clerics insists. This Nigeria newspaper, we don't want war, uh, Islamic clerics insists. All right, find all the details on the front page of this Nigeria newspaper. Now to the front page of the Daily Trust. Niger crisis, cow, sheep shortage, sheep shortage looms as border closure bites harder. Cow, sheep shortage looms as border closure bites harder. It's been reported that a majority of uh, the cows and sheep that we consume in this part of the world is usually gotten from Niger. And uh, the writer here says supply reduced by 50% in Borno, 70% in Katsina. All the details on the front page of the Daily Trust. So Nigeria News Direct now. Fresh crisis rocks APC over National Working Committee appointments. Fresh crisis rocks APC over National Working Committee appointments, Cross uh, Kogi, Cross River, Abia, APC rejects new appointments. Police protesters face off. You find the details on the front page of the Nigeria News Direct. Now to the front page of the Blueprint newspaper. Era of propaganda and government policies over. Era of propaganda and government policies over as the federal government speaking there. And the writer here says, charges media, public relations manager on credible information. All the details on the front page of the Blueprint newspaper. Now to the Guardian newspaper, battered national image. Step aside, please. The many troubles of green passport holders. The Guardian newspaper, battered national image. Image, step aside, please. The many troubles of green passport holders. That's uh, talking about uh, the Nigerian passport holders sharing their experiences with regards to holding the passport. All right, you find all the details on the front page of the Guardian newspaper. Ibrahim. Now, the Punch newspaper has it as its headline here Naira crumbles to $920 to dollar. Uh, Fuel marketers push for fresh price hike. And the writer reads, uh, fuel price can't remain at 617 Naira with uh, the currency falling below 900, to 900 Naira to dollar. That's um, eight man. Naira crumbles to 920 to dollar. Fuel marketers push for fresh price hike. And Nigerians don't want to hear this. The Nation newspaper is next. Edo, hyperinflation. Low GDP per capita, uh, per capita to end soon. Edo, hyperinflation, low GDP per capita to end soon. That's um, the Nation newspaper. Business Day. Uh, new MBS job. Uh, new MBS job data suggests Nigeria is U.S. Oh, well, that means unemployment rate falls to 4.1% on new Methodology, that's the Business Day newspaper. Salient Times, Nigeria's unemployment, uh, unemployment rate drops to 4.1% in first quarter of 2023. That's according to the Nat National Bureau of Statistics. Salient Times, Nigeria's 
unemployment rate drops to 4.1% in first quarter 2023. Leadership newspaper is next. 5.3 million prepaid meter risk crashing over software expiration. 5.3 million prepaid meter risk crashing over software expiration. Wow. And uh, last but not least here, the Nature, Nature newspaper. U.S. pledges $9 million for Nigeria's natural disaster response efforts. U.S. pledges $9 million for Nigeria's natural disaster response efforts. That's the Nature newspaper. Uh, Veronica, so much to, to chew on you know, from this newspaper um, headlines that we we'll just Absolutely. read. Absolutely. Uh, but to we'll look at uh, the story that is making on the front page of a majority of the papers now, I'm talking about uh, the coup in Niger and how uh, ECOWAS chair, President Bola Tinubu, is responding to the matter. Uh, just uh, yesterday, he met with uh, some Islamic clerics who are members of the Council of Ulamas, and uh, they had a conversation where they were saying that they do not want war, talking about uh, the clerics. And uh, ECOWAS chair, President uh, um, Tinubu, said that um, actually he is under pressure from within the ECOWAS and outside of the ECOWAS. Persons who, are, who he, they can't control when it comes to ECOWAS now, mm. and uh, that um, he is trying to ensure that they, have, they engage the coupist and he, the matter of um, you know, the standby force invading uh, Niger is a last resort. He is after a peaceful negotiation as it is. And so uh, he has asked the Islamic clerics to continue their dialogue mm -hmm. with the military junta. So they should be going to Niger anytime soon to have a conversation uh, with the coupist. Well, um, it, it is to show that um, the ECOWAS, ECOWAS and um, the, the, this, this, the region are quite in, in a very dire strait, dire mm. situation. Because for the president to have said that, I'm managing very serious situation. If, t if you take ECOWAS aside, other people will react. Those who are outside of our control, I'm the one holding you know, uh, those sides back. It means that the president himself you know, of Nigeria, President Bola Tinobo, is not willing to also go to war. I think he's listening, you know, from different, you know, diplomats who are saying that we should, what they should do is to continue conversation. And that's the reason why the ulamas, uh, who are scholars, they actually mean scholars of Islamic um, uh, jurisprudence, knowledge, and um, theology. Mm. So if they can use their own understanding, their own influence. background, influence, yeah. you know, to have this dialogue with, you know, their brothers uh, who are in Niger, um, you know, because of, of the, of the um, closeness yeah. that, that, that they share with Nigeria and some other uh, parts of, the, of, of ECOWAS. So if they continue talking based on what the former head of state, General Abdul Salam Abu Bakar Ita, had said, that they made little progress. Yes. But it's, whether little or not little, there was progress. There was progress. Yeah. So meaning that if they continue this dialogue, because the superpowers, uh, you know, those who are, have negative in, interest towards um, what is happening in Niger, towards what is happen happening in Africa, they will always want to, because they, they produce guns, they manufacture guns, they want to sell guns for where conflict. We see what is happening in Syria. We see what is happening between Russia and Ukraine. We don't want that to happen, you know, on African soil. We, we are still seeing, we're still reading from what uh, our brothers experienced, you know, in, in Sudan before they were evacuated yeah. from, from Sudan. So we don't want that to happen. So they should continue that conversation. And General Chiani should also tread carefully. You know, you should tread carefully. If you're accusing the uh, former incumbent president as uh, accusing him of corruption, accusing him of mis uh, mismanagement, accusing him of, uh, of uh, different, so, you know, many accusations against him, what exactly are you doing? What you are um, holding on to is a power that wasn't given to you by the people. Mm. It's not constitutional. So whatever it is that you want to do, it shouldn't take up to, uh, don't say you, you, are, you are expecting them to give you three years before you, uh, you, know, you, you form a transitional government uh, for a constitutional order to be restored. So I think it's all, it should also tread carefully because 
if he doesn't handle the matter well from his own side as well, there is nowhere he's going to seek cover. Burkina Faso and Mali are saying they are going to join um, um, uh, Niger you know, in solidarity if ECOWAS stage, uh, stages this war. But that is not what we want to see because we know when you go into the war, that's what we all see. No one knows the outcome of it, mm, you know, it when it happens. Yes, because uh, we are already looking at the economic impact we have lost as a country that shares close ties with Niger. Mm. We have lost a lot economically in billions and billions of Naira. If you look at the papers this morning on the front page of the Daily Trust, uh, the crisis is being reported that cows, sheep shortage looms mm. as border closure bites harder. Supply has reduced by 50% in Borno, 70% in Katsina. And we know how we depend on livestock Absolutely. Uh, for our daily consumption. Uh, that is even on the one hand. Mm. Now, this interest, we have seen that um, France have been speaking with regards to a return to demo democracy in Niger, a uh, return of Bazoum back to power mm -hmm. and all of it. They are, have been speaking with regards to that. Even the U.S. have been speaking. These persons are outside the purview of ECOWAS. Right, right. So that is where my direction is going, that these persons have been putting pressure on ECOWAS as well. They have been speaking. We recall that there was a delegation that was sent uh, by the U.S. who was, they did not, the junta did not even attend to them at all. And um, the conversation that ECOWAS had, I think the first time after that delegation went, they had a conversation where France and even the U.S. were part of it. Mm. And so I believe that these are the persons that are putting pressure on the, the, on the ECOWAS chair to respond. Because Military. France, yes, they, they, they have asked, France has said that um, they will suspend secu security cooperation and that their financial aid to Niger is also something they will suspend. And the U.S. has even said that it, um, its aid is at stake at this time. These are the pressures that they are putting on Niger and also speaking through ECOWAS, mm. saying you need to restore democracy as quickly as possible. Yeah. They have said that, France has said that there has been intervention in some areas in Niger, and if not for them, their presence, there wouldn't have been that peace and stability in such regions. Mm. Uh, but then let's wait to see how ECOWAS you know, handles this matter. We saw just yesterday, uh, Prigozhin, you know, died in a plane crash. Even though the, the death Russia. is now being, the death is being yes, there are, whether he, is, he, he, actually he was died there or, or not. not, whether he died or not, because, you know, only God knows what, what exactly has happened. You know, But for that. that to happen, because mm -hmm. all fingers are pointing at... It could be more like setback for Niger, whatever yes. it is that they... Yes, all fingers are pointing at uh, Russia's president, Vladimir Putin, being he has behind sent his it. Condolences. Of course, he sent his <laughs> condolences and look at the statement he made. Right. And that Prigozhin was a good businessman, so to speak. So he spoke rhetorics there that you can just speak one thing or the other. In fact, Ukraine also spoke saying everybody knows who is behind mm. it. And we also saw, saw US speaking that everyone knows who is behind it as well, that Putin never forgives. Mm. But then, what is the impact, the setback that Prigozhin's supposed death could bring for Niger. Niger. This is where uh, the coupists have to now begin to look at the drawing board, speak with the delegates that will come, put forth, okay, you have said three years. Equus is saying, no, we cannot accept and three years. So immediate, you, you know, guys have restore. to meet somewhere. Mm. Because even when there is a war, you still have to come back, to, come back to that dialogue to that resolve you used to start in the first place. Any issues. And so I believe they should resolve that now mm -hmm. as against having any other issues, despite the pressures on all, all sides. If, if you go to Niger, or, uh, you know, as we are following the development in Niger, yeah. we see that people in Niger are already reading from the impact of these sanctions by, of course. by ECOWAS and um, African Union. Yeah. You know, people are already complaining about the, the, the hike in fuel price. I mean, hike in... Uh, uh, prices of goods, pr uh, high food, items. Food, food items, you know, different materials and all of that. And because of this b uh, border closure, it's also, you know, they are reeling from, you know, the, you know, the, the effects of these sanctions. Yeah. And if this continue, uh, continues, um, it, it's, it's, it, President Inubu said that then General Chiani, the coupist, 
should be blamed because they can't be using the gun that they gave them to protect the, the, the citizen of um, Niger and they use it against them. So, you know, it's, it's all, of, all about this because at the end of the day, he might also be tried mm. for whatever it is that, that, that must have transpired yeah. during the time that he's holding sway. Mm. So I'm not keen on the international, you know, talking about France, talking about um, America, talk, et cetera, uh, Russia. They all have their interests. Mm. It's still much like, you know, the neocolonial scramble for Africa. Mm. So everyone has their own interest in Africa. We should be able to handle our own internal affairs. We should be able to handle these issues without, you know, with little or no, you know, foreign Russia. interference. Yeah. Because France, now France is talking to, like they are angry. You know, imagine them talking to, uh, telling Algeria that they need, um, they, they are asking for permission to use their airspace so as to strike. And Algeria um, Niger, say no. That you can't use it. So if, that, if they strike force at first, we know what's going to happen. Niger what what is will start? To be a sovereign nation. Absolutely. What? Why are you putting so much pressure? Of course, it's about interest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why are you pressurizing ECOWAS? Mm -hmm. Leave ECOWAS to hand because the way it is, it's seeming like ECOWAS. You are not doing this thing the way we want. Absolutely. So I, I you might have there are brothers. Us, there are brothers. So some some leeway to, mm -hmm. to come in and handle these things the way we want. Restore um, constitutional order leeway. in place uh, and all of that. But Leeway, yes. you said, or they want to scatter everything. You, 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 well, don't, you can't, you can't talk is. about, you can't talk about war now. You know, in this, in this, in this um, um, era, we shouldn't be talking about war. We should be talking about diplomacy, and that's what the 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 the, the, the colonialist um, colonial masters have been preaching that we should, because that's the reason why we have democracy. But they are, is France not the <laughs> so? So I, I like I like what there? what Nigeria's president uh, Tinubu, you know, said that you know he's under pressure. Mm. There's so many issues he's handling in Nigeria. And to now add it, uh, add ECOWAS to, to, to this issue. So I feel that uh, we are doing the right, right thing by sending back the ulamas to have this conversation or to, to dialogue with, with the Kupis. I, we, we I can only that hope, will come or we can only stick. hope that um, they also make some progress with this conversation, mm. uh, building on the previous progress that have been achieved with regards to the dialogue. We can only keep our fingers crossed mm. till we see that happen.